Hello, I'm going to show you how to make some of the trickier aspects of the medieval mayhem. Just a quick word to start with about the glue pen that comes with the kit. Remember to unscrew the nozzle and take out the little safety cap inside which is there just to make sure that the glue doesn't leak. And then screw the nozzle back on and you're ready to go. Now some people find it easier to use the glue pen like this and just squidge it directly through the nozzle. Um, personally I like to put it all in a tray and then use a bamboo skewer to dip into the glue. I find that's easier to control but it's up to you. When we get to stage six on page eight all these parts will be glued firmly together and we're ready to put the crank handle in and the first cam in place. Make sure you put a good coating of wax on the cam that will make it all run a lot more smoothly. Before we glue the cam in position we're going to put a glue guard between the cam and part number four. This stops the glue getting onto part number four to make sure that the crank handle will always turn freely. So if we turn the cam round as it goes up the dowel, make sure the glue goes all the way round. So when we take the glue guard away, there's a little tiny gap between the cam and part number four to make sure that that will always turn freely. So once the first cam uh, has dried and the glue has set, we can put the first layer on. And if I turn the crank handle round, you can see how the cam causes the piece to rock. Then we'll put the first spacer on. The instructions show that to be glued, but it isn't necessary, you can just leave it loose. The cams you have to glue on firmly, but the spacers you don't. So make sure you remember to wax the cams. And we're ready to put the second one on. The glue needs to go on the shaft as well as the cam. Oops. So the second cam goes on at a slight angle to the first one. Then we can put the second layer on and another spacer. Wax the cam. and glue the third cam on again at a bit of an angle to the second so that the three cams together create a spiral. Then we can put the third layer on and the final spacer. Don't be tempted to test it at this stage because those cams um, are not dried in place and if you try and turn the handle and test it now, you might dislodge the cams. So leave it for a few minutes. Okay, we're now ready to take these pieces out of their board. Um, some of them are very delicate, so we have to do this very carefully. If you just push them, they should fall out. And then you can use the sandpaper to just take off any little rough bit. This piece with the fighting soldiers is particularly delicate because their swords and axes are very, very thin. So just be really careful how they come out. And once they are out, keep them out of harm's way so they don't get snapped. Just taking off the little burrs where the piece is attached to the sheet of wood. Sometimes it helps to use a knife just to ease out some of the parts that look as though they might get stuck. So have a knife with a thin sharp blade to hand. So 
sometimes you just need to give it a bit of a, a bit of a wiggle. I'm going to use the knife to press out his foot from the other side because I can see that's where it's sticking. At stage 13, we're ready to assemble the cat catapult parts. Um, be careful that part 13 here on the 5mm dowel, um, that the glue has dried perfectly well before you put it in the hole, so that the glue doesn't get in the way of it rotating freely. So on the back you need another part 13, and a little bit of glue and the catapult arm goes on there. Now don't squeeze it together too tight, just test that that is turning freely before you set it aside to let the glue dry. When it comes to putting the block on the back of the castle at stage 23 on page 18, it's a little bit tricky getting it lined up correctly. So I'm just going to put some glue on the back of the block and it needs to be positioned so that the peg just comes up to the side of that shaft but isn't tight up against it. And this friction wheel needs to ride on the very, very edge of that wheel. So just try and get it in neatly and as vertically as possible in that position. Stage 26, nearly at the end, is to put the pulleys in place on the back of the model. So we'll put a glue guard there between the pulley and the back. Put glue in the hole. So when that's in place, you can take the glue guard out and that ensures that there's a tiny gap between the pulley and the back so that that will be able to turn freely. So we'll move on to the next one and do the same. Oops. Use plenty of glue here because that needs to be a really good, good fit. So that's there. And we can leave that to dry. Make sure that that glue is really properly set before you try putting the bands on to, um, for the final operation of the model. While that's drying, we can turn it round and put these little figures in place on the castle front. Now the instruction booklet suggests you do this at stage 15 but I like to do it right at the end because then I can look at the composition of the model as a whole and decide where I want to put them when I can see it all together. So I usually have them having a bit of a fight across the front of the castle there. Bear in mind that this piece here turns round with these on the battlements, so you don't want to get your figure in the way of that. final bit here is to put the flag on the flagpole. Just hold it steady for a, a few seconds for the glue to grip and there we go. 